Hello from LPL Financial. Welcome to The Talking Point. I'm your host, Quincy Crosby. Good morning. This is Quincy Crosby. It is Monday morning, May 15th, and this is The Talking Point. As I do this call late in the morning on Monday, uh, the market for the most part is uh, in positive territory. It's a difficult week for the market because there is a very important clutch of important economic data, but also all eyes are on Washington, D.C. in terms of any sense as to how the talks are going, yes, on the debt ceiling. Uh, staffers have been meeting. Apparently, the talks have been constructive, which is always good news. That, that word constructive is so important when comments are made. And apparently, uh, Speaker of the House McCarthy and President Biden and the, you know, the leadership teams are going to meet. But nonetheless, having the staffers work on this is all that's always important because the staffers are experts experts, those are who's working on it, they're experts in not only what their party wants, but on how to get there and also how to negotiate and how to come up with a deal. So again, so far so good as we start the week in terms of the debt ceiling talks. Now, this week, as I said, has a very important um, roster of economic data releases. Already this morning on Monday morning, we had the Empire State Manufacturing Survey. Now, this is not considered to be the most important. It's New York State manufacturing and includes some of New Jersey, some of Connecticut. I just want to mention it was not good. It was not good. It was lower than expectations, which were already low. But keep in mind, I say this over and over again as we go through the new series of manufacturing reports that it is the Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Survey that the market is very focused on. And the reason is it has a very high positive correlation with the overall manufacturing trend in the United States. And we're going to be paying attention always to new orders, hiring expectations, and also prices paid and export orders also is included in uh, new orders. They'll break that down. But for that, we have to wait until Thursday. Tomorrow, on Tuesday, we're going to have retail sales, industrial production, and the Home Builders Confidence Report. All of these are very important, particularly because right now there is that continuing tug of war regarding the strength of the U.S. economy. Retail sales obviously are crucial as the U.S. consumer is responsible for about 70 percent of our GDP. So we want to see that trend and has it been slowing and if so, by how much. Industrial production also important, and we know that that has been slowing too. And the home builder confidence, and this is an interesting one because we actually have been seeing home uh, building supplies, products actually higher. Uh, we want to see whether or not that holds up. Uh, if you've been following this, you'll see many of the home builders themselves have actually been climbing higher. But it's important because it is focused on customers uh, who are following the uh, mortgage rates. But then again, there are many, just based on the data that we are seeing, who are saying, okay, I'm going to go in and, and many of the, especially high end, are working with potential customers, potential buyers, uh, even with their mortgages, and also to give them uh, more, you know, upgrades, free upgrades. So it it's actually has not been dire. But that said, we're also going to see on Wednesday the housing starts, and that also tells a very important um, picture of how optimistic are the home builders actually in terms of new building, and, and you'll see that in the housing starts. So these are important um, data releases. And then we'll also get building permits on Thursday. But as I said, on Thursday... It is that Philadelphia Fed uh, manufacturing report that the market is going to uh, watch very closely. We'll also get existing home sales. And here's another one that is, I, I 
I stress this, very important, U.S. leading economic indicators. That is on Thursday and Friday, Federal Reserve Chairman Powell and none other than Ben Bernanke are going to be on a panel. Now, all week long, all week long, it is a heavy, heavy schedule of Fed speakers. Uh, it's one of the heaviest schedules of Fed speakers that I have seen. And the question is, is there a special message that they want to get out? Now, you've noticed that there's sometimes one will say this, the other one will say that. But when they are in concert with one another, where they have discussed something and they disagree with what the market is saying, very often they will go out with a message that is almost scripted. So this morning we had uh, uh, the, uh, the head of the Federal Reserve Bank in Atlanta, but saying, look, I don't think we should have more rate hikes, but I don't see the Fed cutting rates this year. Now, why would he say that? Because the Fed funds futures market is actually say, stating, and it's been pretty consistent, that the folks who go into the futures market, the probability of rate cuts coming in September. And his view is, no, 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 I, we don't, I don't see that. We see the Fed perhaps not raising rates again, but certainly not cutting rates. So it's going to be interesting to hear what they have to say. And whether or not, I want to repeat this, they are all on the same message. That tells you that the Fed has been concerned that the market may be seeing something else. So what else is going on in this market? Let me go over a couple of things from last week. One is that on May 8th, we had the uh, senior Fed, uh, senior bankers lending, senior officers in charge of lending at their, at their banks. Now, it's said that they expect to see a slowdown, but it wasn't dire. It wasn't like, oh, no, 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 absolutely no lending. We can't do anything. It wasn't that bad. But it still suggested that standards have gone up and it could be a bit more difficult to secure a loan. But also at the same time, we had the National Association of Independent Businesses, that's the small business owner, suggesting that they think it's harder to get a loan, but that they were not necessarily going to go out and seek loans. That, I thought, was extremely interesting. Uh, they are the, the largest uh, hire, uh, you know, uh, they hire the most people. But nonetheless, they said, yeah, they think it's more difficult, but they were not going to go out and try to get loans. So that tells you that there's more caution in the market, that I'm not going to go out and borrow money now because I don't know where sales are going to be. That, I mean, that's essentially what that message uh, alludes to. The other, the other issue for the market is this. Despite the fact that the consumer price index, the CPI, and the producer price index, the PPI, have the headline reports have been coming down for just about 10 months straight, almost straight. And that has helped the market make a decision and the Fed itself that, you know what, it's moving in the right direction. And, you know, it is a good possibility that we, the Fed, Chairman Powell said it, that, that we, you know, we may not raise rates again. We want to monitor the cumulative effect of all of the rate hikes. And at the same time, uh, you know, inflation's moving in the right direction. However, last Friday morning, the University of Michigan's Consumer Sentiment Report, is, it's, the, it's the provisional. In other words, there's going to be another one coming out, which will be the final report. But this is the, the first report, if you will, came out. And embedded in that was one, consumer sentiment declining pretty dramatically, but also consumers' future look at inflation, a five-year look ahead at inflation, was up. And it was up, actually, as this series has been in, 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 um, in force, more than, more than 10 years, higher, highest in more than 10 years. Uh, and it was over 3%. This is something the Fed does not want to see. I can share this with you. The worry that all central banks have is that the population starts to see inflation entrenched. In other words, 
It's never going to come down. You better buy things now because they're just going to be more expensive. It works the same way, by the way, when we start to see when consumers think that you're going to have deflation for a long time. That also doesn't help because it's don't buy it today because tomorrow it'll be cheaper. But right now, as the Fed is trying to fight inflation, they are worried. They have to be worried that this number should not be that high. And uh, they want to do everything in their power to break it as soon as they can. So we're going to see whether or not, and this is important, that had any relation, any relationship with the fact that the Fed funds futures market in terms of probability for a rate hike in June has gone up. Uh, last week, the Fed Funds futures market in terms of probability for a rate hike in June was actually down and down, I would say, substantially. Then it moved higher and it's now just above 20 percent. Now, granted, that's not that high. It's certainly not 50 percent. But if it's inching higher, that's something to watch because people say, well, Quincy, that's only a bunch of traders going in. Um, I wouldn't exactly say that. But it is something that the market is fo focuses on, and the Fed looks at it as well. But that said, you don't want to see that number climb because the market expectation is the Fed's done. Chairman Powell, though, made it very clear. Uh, you know, we're not necessarily done. We're watching the data. We're data dependent. And that's why this week will be important because the series of data we have this week will really help, um, I, I think, help underpin whether or not the economy is slowing enough in order, in order to bring down that sticky inflation right in the what they call the super core. Uh, we just have to follow and we have to follow. And I'm going to be following the Fed Funds futures market to see what it is saying after these reports are out. At the same time, this concern over a recession doesn't show up in the GDP expectations that we look at. So just to give you an example, I do look at the Atlanta Fed GDP Now report. And remember, this is ongoing, it's fluid, and it takes in every data release that, that comes out. And so far, it's looking at GDP for this quarter, the second quarter, at around 2.7%. It will change. It will go up. It'll go down depending on the, um, the data. And it's certainly this week's uh, um, clutch of data, it will affect the report. So all of this, again, takes us through the story, through the thread of how we see uh, the Fed viewing this information and what they might expect for June, for that June meeting. You know, when we talk about a slowdown, an economic slowdown, and we also have embedded in that expectations for higher inflation, and let's just say we have higher prices coming, actually coming in and not coming down at all, that gives you a kind of tinge of what we call stagflation. In other words, the economy slowing, but inflation sticky and even climbing higher. That's something that the, we don't need for our economy, and it is certainly something that central banks, particularly the Fed, want to make sure they tackle right, right at the source and go in there and actually come in with a rate hike. So we're going to see whether or not the Fed sees this as being difficult, whether they talk about it, or whether or not they just skirt the issue and just stay data dependent until we get to the June meeting. So there's an awful lot for the market to, uh, to take a look at. Uh, also pay attention, please, to the U.S. dollar. It has pulled back a little bit today, but at the end of last week, it started to climb higher, something that doesn't fit with the notion that the market, the currency market, thinking, well, the Fed is just about finished. The dollar should not be climbing in that uh, environment. Now, perhaps it was a safe haven trade. In other words, I'm worried about the dollar. I'm worried about the, the debt ceiling. I'm worried about this. I'm worried about that. I'll, I'll buy more dollars, which is not exactly intuitive. But nonetheless, it's still an important um, safety trade. But when I see it in 
conjunction with the probability of a rate hike inching higher, I begin to put the two together and I say, whoa, is the currency market coming to a, 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 a scenario in which they think it could be possible for the Fed to actually raise rates at the June meeting? Because remember, the dollar has been weakening against the basket of currencies that we trade against because the market has been saying the Fed is just about done. It's something called the interest rate differential, which is what underpinned the dollar last year and just pushed the dollar higher and higher. Um, but once it was clear back in the fall of last year that the Fed was, you know, actually telegraphing that they were coming closer and closer to the end, the dollar started to weaken and weaken and weaken. Right now, the European Central Bank is probably on target for another rate hike. The Bank of England is probably on target for another rate hike as inflation continues to rise. That should put pressure on the, do uh, the dollar if you believe that the Fed is absolutely finished. So again, the first thought is, well, it's the market being nervous about the debt ceiling debate. It is something else. Well, what about when you match it, I want to repeat, with the probability for a rate hike climbing higher, not by much, but it's climbing higher. It's not moving down. Uh, that tells me that maybe, just maybe, the markets are thinking, yeah, the Fed could very well be forced in many ways to come in with a rate hike in June. We'll see. There's a, let's pay attention to the Fed speak this week, which is just nonstop, and particularly Powell and Bernanke on Friday. And then I will be paying attention to all of the uh, data and also the responses in the market to the data. So we want that market to broaden out. We want more, more companies participating in a rally. And I think if there's any sense that this debt ceiling issue could be, could be actually, you know, solvable before the X day, um, I think this market could have a very, very good rally, but it would be very helpful if it is broader. In other words, not just in that handful of big tech stocks. So a lot for the market to digest this week, but we will be following it and, uh, have a good week. Thank you so much for listening. This material was prepared by LPL Financial. It's for general information only and is not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. There is no assurance that the views or strategies discussed are suitable for all investors or will yield positive outcomes. Investing involves risks, including possible loss of principal. Any economic forecast set forth in the podcast may not develop as predicted and are subject to change. References to markets, asset classes, and sectors are generally regarding the corresponding market index. All indexes are unmanaged and cannot be invested into directly. Index performance is not indicative of the performance of any investment and do not reflect fees, expenses, or sales charges. All performance reference is historical and is no guarantee of future results. All information referenced in the podcast is believed to be from reliable sources. However, we make no representation as to its completeness or accuracy. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor and broker-dealer, member FINRA and SIPC. Insurance products are offered through LPL or its licensed affiliates. To the extent you are receiving investment advice from a separately registered independent investment advisor that is not an LPL affiliate, please note LPL makes no representation with respect to such entity. If your financial professional is located at a bank or credit union, please note that the bank or credit union is not registered as a broker dealer or investment advisor. Registered representatives of the LPL may also be employees of the bank or credit union. These products and services are being offered through LPL or its affiliates, which are separate entities from and not affiliates of the bank or credit union. Securities and insurance offered through LPL or its affiliates are not insured by the FDIC or NCUAA or any other government agency, not bank or credit union guarantee guaranteed not bank or credit union deposits or obligations and may lose value.